Hey everybody, my name is Jason and welcome to another Babylon video. Today, we're continuing to take a look at exporting custom frames in the Node Material Editor. For anybody who's not familiar with frames, this is the ability to encapsulate a series of nodes or operations for your shader and then package them together to reuse again and again and again. You can export them, save them, share them with your friends, reuse them. It's awesome. So we are continuing to look at this particular Node Material session right here. Now, what we have here is uh, just a, a plane that has incoming data. It doesn't really matter what that data is, but we have a custom node called the out of bounds node, OOB, that will take that incoming data and it will evaluate if there is any value above one or below zero, and then it will give it a certain color so we can visually see that if we pass it to the fragment shader. So essentially anything that you see here that's blue is above one, and anything you see that is red is below zero, where previously that would have just shown up as white or black, the same as zero and one do. So this is an awesome tool that we can use as a debugging feature to see if any of our values are above one and below zero. Totally cool. And by the way, what we covered last in the last video is you can now have this as a custom frame. It's available to you in the node menu on the left-hand side of this awesome tool. So I can now drag it out and reuse it whenever I want. Well, today we're gonna continue to take a look at custom frames, specifically using two more to be able to influence the look of what we're seeing here. If you're familiar with digital cameras and uh, the, the look of what happens when you have overexposure, essentially, usually what you see is kind of a zebra stripe pattern is what's it, what it's called, where there's a line that kind of animate or lines that animate across the screen whenever there's an area that's blown out or overexposed in your image. We're gonna have a similar kind of effect. So anything that's blue, we're gonna have kind of blue lines that sort of animate in one way, and then red lines for anything that's below zero that animate a different way to kind of give us that, you know, out of bounds, overexposed type of a look. Uh, and so without any further ado, let's do this by using two more custom frames. We're not gonna go through all of the details of what's inside of every frame. I'll give you a high level overview. Um, we've covered sine waves a lot in uh, on, our, on our YouTube channel and I'll, I will link to another video that goes over this at length in the description of this video down below. Um, but essentially what this is, is this is a sine wave. Uh, this will take in uh, speed, uh, how fast you want the, the, the sine wave to move, and uh, the wavelength, basically, and then uh, you know a couple of other properties. And um, we can combine that with this custom node, which is an awesome ability for us to take a slider between negative one and one and turn that into basically a cardinal a compass, a kind of cardinal direction. So we'll combine these two things and then use that to pump into our custom frame of the out of bounds node and show you truly the power of how you can reuse these groupings over and over and over again. This is so incredibly cool. So without any further ado, let's do this. We're going to take our um, two nodes and we're going to collapse them down. I'm going to take my direction slider custom frame here, and I'm going to connect that right into direction. Okay. And then I'm going to take uh, zebra color. So this is the color I want. We'll start with the ceiling color. Okay. So I do have, let's actually move these over here a little bit. I do have two colors. Oh, they're both called ceiling color. Uh, this, this red one, that's probably my mistake from the uh, first video. This one should be called uh, floor color. So we're gonna take our ceiling color and we're gonna pass that in here. It also wants the mesh position. So we can drag this down and connect the mesh position up in to this node as well. And then it wants a speed and a wavelength. So let's just um, drag out two floats from here like this and like this. So we can label these just so that they're nice and clear. Uh, we'll call the first one speed. And we'll call the second one wavelength. And now let's give it an initial speed of say 20. Uh, and then we'll give it an initial wavelength of 50. And now this one is all completely hooked up and good to go. So whenever, when I hook this up, what you'll see is anything, uh, let's actually pass this right into the color. Let's just put it right into the out of bounds node. And now watch what happens we now have a blue striped kind of zebra stripe effect whenever there is something that's out of bounds. And that's just using these custom frames that I had created earlier. 
How awesome is that? So essentially three nodes take a bunch of math and compress it all together to give us this awesome visualization. So cool. Well, let's do it again for the anything, any value that's below zero for the red section, okay? So same thing. I'm gonna drag out my direction slider and I'm gonna drag out my zebra stripes. We'll hook up direction. We'll hook up the mesh position and let's take the zebra color for the floor that's red. And then we're also going to uh, use the exact same speed and wavelength um, uh, values here, those properties. And then we're going to hook the zebra stripes for the floor right up to the floor and check this out. Boom. Now we've got zebra stripes for the floor as well. So incredibly cool. But the power of having this direction custom frame, we're not actually taking advantage of. Notice how all those lines are completely parallel and look like they're going the exact same way. Well, we have the ability now to completely change that. If we open up the direction slider that's influencing the floor uh, value, we can actually change this and have it go a completely different direction. How bonkers is that? And that's a custom frame that allows us to do that. And then same thing, we can actually do the ceiling value as well. If we want, let me just drag this over here. Uh, if we want that to go in a completely different direction or different way, we can do that as well. That's bonkers and so incredibly cool. This is custom frames in the node material editor, an amazing new powerful tool that you can use to create some amazing Babylon experiences. I hope these two videos have helped you learn something about how you can reuse the work that you've done just like you would a function in your code. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, and if you have any ideas on other things that you'd like to see or other custom nodes that you'd like to see, let us know. And don't forget, we also have a repo where we are storing custom nodes that the commu community can use for free because that is the power of open source. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me over these two videos. I, again, I hope it's been helpful and that you've learned something. Please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates. We try and bring video content to the channel once a week uh, with lots of new things to learn about Babylon. Thanks again for coming along. We'll see you next time.